Hi, I'm Jill Galloway. I'm an artist educator at the Smithsonian's National Portrait Gallery. In today's open studio lesson, we're going to look at several portraits of Frederick Douglass. I've chosen one of those portraits for us to focus on because it links nicely with a great art project and also one of his greatest achievements. We're going to be making our very own books. This is not a hard art lesson. I will walk you through it step by step so you don't need to have any experience. Okay, let's get started. Frederick Douglass was born a slave on a plantation in Talbot County, Maryland. He was born here in this cabin in about 1818. As a young slave, his master's wife taught him how to read the alphabet, which was against the law. Regardless, he taught himself how to read and not long after bought his first book, The Columbian Orator. This was a book filled with essays and poems and was widely used in school classrooms. Over time, Frederick Douglass's resolve to escape was formed, and in 1838, at the age of 20 years old, he disguised himself as a sailor and boarded a train and traveled north. Douglass begins hearing speeches given by other abolitionists and starts giving speeches himself. He had a gift. When he gave speeches, people listened. The right speech by the right person at the right time can change history. But his book is what I want to focus on today. It's called The Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass, an American Slave, and focuses on his time as a slave. This portrait is a painting based on the frontispiece or the illustration that's found in the front of that book. While we don't know who made this painting, it's an unidentified artist, we can learn a lot about the artist and what the artist is trying to say to you by reading this portrait. Take a look at his expression. Rarely in this time in history do you see this off-to-the-side look. It's usually reserved for scholars. What about his clothing? Are these the kinds of clothes you would typically think to see on a slave? Clearly, the artist is trying to make him look as professional as possible. In fact, we see the artist here doing lots of things to prove that this person is accomplished, confident, and someone who should be listened to. Look at these bright contrasting colors, big dark black splotches against bright bright white. In fact, you can see here where the artist globbed on paint colors to make sure that that white shirt stays very white. There's also something in this painting called a pintamento. Pintamento is when you can see an artist making changes. In a lot of ways, it's great when you can see this pintamento because you're reading the artist's thoughts. Notice here around the outside of Frederick Douglass's hair. The background paint is going over portions of his hair. You see the artist here buttoning up and refining this pose and this portrait as much as possible. Remember, it went into the front of his very first book, so this portrait is meant to show him confident, smart, intelligent, someone who we should all be listening to. Today for the art project, we're going to make our own books. So the supplies you'll need is some white paper, some standard printer paper will be fine, one piece of colored paper, a hole punch, one small stick, and two small pieces of string. You'll first fold the white papers in half. Now take one white paper and measuring about half a finger length down, make a small hole with your hole punch. Make sure the hole is on the folded side of the paper. Do this on the top and the bottom. Once you have one piece with the holes in it, you can place the other white sheets inside and make the rest of the holes. They should all line up. Depending on how many papers you put in your book, you can add as many as you like. You might have to separate out the sheets of white paper and just do a few at a time. Now for the colored paper. Take your colored paper and fold it in half the same way you did with your white papers. Now slide the colored paper inside the white papers and line up the edges. That way you can see that the holes are going to line up and just use the hole punch to make holes in the colored paper. You'll switch the colored paper to the outside to become the cover of your book. Now lay the stick on the edge of the paper and make small marks where the holes would line up on the stick. Take one piece of string and tie it around the stick where the mark is. Wrap it around a few times and make a small knot. And then do the same on the bottom. Lay the stick down on the edge of the paper now and then wrap each string through the holes binding up the book. 
You can fill the book with pictures or poems or anything you like. If you run out of pages, you can just untie the string and add some more. Thanks so much for joining me for today's Open Studio lesson. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a great time filling out your books. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.